As we begin to talk about the first Korean believers, there is one man we can't leave out, although he wasn't Korean. He was a Scottish missionary named John Ross. Now he's important because he mentored and guided the first Korean believers in the early days of their faith, but he also directed the first Korean Bible translations. This is extremely important because when it comes to the spread of Christianity, Korea was a unique case because there were already Bibles translated in the native language when the first and second wave of missionaries arrived. And we, in large part, have John Ross to thank for that. John Ross was born on July 6, 1842 in the village of Ballantor, Scotland. He grew up attending churches in the United Presbyterian Church of Scotland denomination, which was a Calvinist and Reformed denomination that focused heavily on missions. Not much is known of how he was called to pastoral ministry, but from 1865 to 1870, he attended the Theological Hall of the United Presbyterian Church. In September of 1868, Ross was inspired to become a missionary during a lecture about foreign missions. Now, he loved his people, but also felt a strong call to foreign missions. After more than three years of wrestling and prayer, Ross decided to become a missionary to China in 1872. 1872 was an eventful year for John Ross. February 27, he was officially appointed as missionary to China. Then in March 20, he was ordained as a minister of the gospel. And seven days later, in March 27, he married M.A. Stewart. The couple left Scotland in April 1872 and landed in China in August after a four-month voyage. The city they landed in was none other than... Now forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but Chefu was Chifu. Chifu had become the main center of missions for the United Presbyterian Church denomination. There, Ross heard the story of Robert J. Thomas, who we talked about in our previous video. He heard the story of how Thomas was martyred while trying to present the gospel to the people of the Kingdom of Joseon six years earlier in 1866. John Ross was so deeply inspired by the story of Robert J. Thomas, and he decided he would continue where Thomas left off. So he transferred from Chifu to a city called Yonggu, which was located in the Yodong Peninsula. However, when they arrived, tragedy struck. His wife died giving birth to their son, Drummond. Ross buried himself in his work. His vision was now not just for Joseon, but for the northeast region of China as well. There were many communities of Joseon people living in Manchuria at the time as well. He had his work cut out for him to learn Mandarin, Manchurian, and the Korean languages. He heard that Joseon merchants trading and selling goods usually came to the border city of Tando, which was also called the Korean Gate. And so he set out with hundreds of Chinese Bibles to hand out. In his first visit to the Korean Gate in 1874, he passionately preached the gospel and it seemed like he had a good-sized crowd of Joseon merchants gathering around him. But to his utter dismay, they were only there because they wanted to know how much his suit costed and what type of material it was made out of. He offered them Bibles, but these were still strictly forbidden in Joseon and punishable by death. But he was able to get them to take the Bibles when he offered the Bibles with candles, which were rare at the time. That night, an elderly man approached Ross, and the two shared deep conversations on a number of topics. Ross gave the man some Bibles and candles when it was time to leave. But little did Ross know that the elderly man was the father of the man who had become the first Korean elder and martyr, Baek Kong Jun. From this visit to the Korean gate, Ross realized that the best way to reach the people of Joseon was by making a Bible translated in their language and handing those out. In 1876, missionary John McIntyre arrived at Yonggu as backup for Ross on the mission field. So once McIntyre was settled in, Ross left for the city of Shimyang in Manchuria where he found a Korean language tutor. The Korean language tutor was a man from the city of Uiju in Joseon 
named Yi Eung Chan. And we'll talk about him more in another episode. Under the tutelage of Yi Eung Chan, Ross quickly picked up the Korean language, and in 1877, he published his own Korean language textbook called The Korean Primer. That year, Ross visited Yonggu, and McIntyre introduced him to a young man also from the city of Uiju. His name was Seo Sang Yun. This was a spectacular moment in history because Seo Sang Yun would be baptized as the very first Korean believer.